Today is a Saturday and I have plans to sew my last project of the fall season which if you watched my um, upcoming projects video that I made at the beginning of fall you will know is a work jacket work trousers combination. I don't think that there was a specific look that I saw that inspired this. I have been wanting to make a work jacket in that kind of style for a very long time and when I saw this gorgeous rusty red denim material, I don't actually know what it is. It's, it's certainly like a heavy cotton material that has like a denim feel to it but it's like a very very beautiful clean denim. When I saw this I knew that I wanted to make an entire set out of it. Being well aware that wearing a red jacket and red trousers is not something that I usually do <laughs> but for some reason I just felt like that could be a cool look and I wanted to give it a try. So it's definitely one of the riskier projects in terms of um, out there fashion for me. So I already created the pattern for this look. It's a lot of pieces. So if you're interested let me know in the comments maybe I can make a video just for the pattern but it has quite a few pieces. These are all of the small pieces, like the waistband, the collar, um, the pocket for the jacket, etc. We also have um, the trouser pattern, which is actually kind of cool because it doesn't have a side seam. I think the first step for me today is to cut out all of my pieces, which I can do now. I then have to go out and get a few essentials. I already did get, this has also been out there for me. I already got some lining for the jacket and uh, it's, it's special. <laughs> It is a leopard print lining and I wanted something fun and funky for the inside of my jacket so I went with this. It might be controversial, I think it could look cool. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. And I also need some buttons so I might get those as well uh, today. So come join me for this uh, day in my life so long video. Okay, just came back from my shopping outside for some additions to the piece. I got some bias tape to finish the seams on the inside. It's not the perfect match, but I think it's close enough. I also got some thread in the matching-ish color. I got a zipper for the trousers. And the hardest thing to choose was definitely the buttons because I didn't really find anything that like, you know, made me go, oh yes, that's the one. Um, but I ended up with this. It's a simple brown button, nothing too fancy. Um, it's quite minimalist, I would say. It has a bit of a wood effect to it. So I decided to go with these because my lining is brown as well. So I thought, let's go with that theme. Okay, now that I have all of that stuff, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing. This is definitely not a one-day project for sure, like this is gonna take more time I think but I decided to ease into it and to take it step by step and to try to enjoy the process and then hopefully we end up with something that we really like so let's get into sewing. <sighs> I had a really crappy day yesterday. <laughs> I started sewing, I was working away on my trousers on this pattern that I have already used previously and made some trousers from that fit me perfectly. And for some reason, I used this pattern again and made, sort of made trousers. And they don't even fit me if I would be half my size. 
I have no idea why. Um, well, actually, I do have an idea why. The reason why is, I think, because I removed the inner seam of the leg and apparently I probably, last time, left quite a bit more seam allowance than I thought I did. And that's why the trousers fit me. And this time, there's this huge gap in the front, um, at my belly, basically that's just like open and there's nothing I can do and I just keep ignoring my own advice I don't know why I do that I keep telling you guys don't do finishing touches before you try the piece for the first time and make sure it fits you I was so full of myself yesterday I just attached the back pockets I kind of like almost finished the zip fly there's no way I can save these pants <sighs> right so the trousers are cancelled. <gasps> um, <laughs> however, the jacket is not. And the jacket really is what this whole thing is about. I'm gonna make the jacket. I have loads of fabric left. So if I can find it in me and I can forgive myself and move on, maybe I'm gonna make the trousers at another point. But in this video, it's all gonna be about the jacket. So it's now Sunday. I kind of like, uh, you know, chill for the last 24 hours. Um, also, there was a video going live today, my corset top that some of you might have seen. Um, so I was really focusing on promoting that um, this morning. Had a lovely lunch, had a lovely breakfast. And now I'm feeling, you know, ready to sit down again and work on the jacket, which is what I'm gonna do now. So let's work on the jacket. Grab your front bodice piece and mark exactly where your pockets are gonna go. For that, you will have to remove the paper pattern. Open the pieces and place the paper pattern back onto the first piece. Make sure you place it the right way so that the seam allowance in all the spots is correct. And then mark where your pocket is going to sit. One side other side. I'm then grabbing my pockets and remove the pattern. I'm gonna use bias tape to finish the entrance points of the pocket in a nice way. So I'm just uh, gonna fold it around the edge here and then I'm going to top stitch that down with a stitch length of 2.5. Now I'm going to press my pockets. Um, I'm going to over flap the entrance point by about two centimeters and all the rest I'm gonna overfold by about half a centimeter. Okay, now I pressed my pockets. They look something like this. And now we can place them onto our pieces. So I'm grabbing one front piece and I'm simply placing the pocket onto the piece, roughly matching the points that I just marked earlier. I'm gonna orient myself on the points that are closer to the center front because obviously now that we have pressed the pocket, it's a little bit smaller. Okay, and I'm going to top stitch it down like so. So now we have attached the pockets to the front pieces. Next up, I'm gonna sew the dart in the back piece. Okay, my friends, the darts are in. And because the darts are in, we can sew the shoulder seams together. I'm placing the back piece so that the right side is facing me and then I'm placing the two front sides so that the right side of the back and the front are facing as well. So one, two. Now just uh, placing the side seam on top of each other so that the right sides are facing. Just placing a few pins.
Okay guys, we have lining, we have shell. Before we join them together, what we also need is the collar. Right, so we have the collar, we have two pieces to overturn the collar. I'm taking one of the pieces and I'm gonna cut it a little bit smaller than the other one, just a tiny bit. Now, we're going to place the two pieces right sides touching and we're going to align the edges. Okay, so I've pinned the two collar pieces together. One is going to be the outside facing piece, one is going to be the under collar. And because I've cut the under collar a little bit smaller, what you can see is that there's a slight curve happening. So the two tips here, they lift up from the table. So when I sew this and I turn it inside out, this under collar is going to pull the outer collar inside. So you can't really see the seam on the outside. So let's sew it. Okay, now we're going to remove all of these needles and snip the seam allowance in a few places so when we overturn this, it's not going to bulge. And I'm also going to cut away these corners like so, so we have an easier time to overturn the whole thing and get a crisp result. To join the collar with the rest of the jacket, we're going to place the jacket in front of us so that we have the neck hole spread out nicely, right side facing us. We're then going to grab the lining, I'm going to do the exact opposite, place the wrong side facing us, us so that the right side of the lining and the right side of the shell are facing each other. We are then going to grab the collar, making sure that we place it so that the left side of the collar is touching the right side of the jacket. I know there's a lot of left and right here, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and now we're going to sandwich the collar in between lining and shell. Place the first needle and now since you know that you've done it the right way, you can start to move the whole thing around and pin shell jacket, collar and lining jacket together along the neckline. Okay, so you should have something looking like this. And when you look between lining and shell, obviously there's gonna be your collar. Okay. So this is how it, it is actually supposed to look. You can see we have a nicely stitched button tape and it also looks neat and clean on the inside. So the way this works is you place your jacket in front of you like so. You're going to fold the top of your button tape over by half a centimeter and just place a needle here to make sure it stays in place. You're then also going to pin your lining onto your shell and again, make sure that you have a parallel distance here between the center front edge and the edge of your lining. This is going to disappear underneath the overturned button tape. Now I'm gonna go to my iron. I'm gonna press the edge over like so. So now I've pressed this over by half a centimeter as I showed you, and then I pressed it over again to create this button tape, which is two and a half centimeters wide. And I'm now simply going to top stitch this down very close to the edge. So I have my bobbin thread showing on the outside, but it should look like a normal stitch. Um, there's not really much of a visual difference between your bobbin thread and your top thread. So I'm gonna do that now. And that closes off your button tape and gives you a nice clean look on the inside. Hey guys, something has changed. I have Invisalign braces now, which you probably can't see as much as you can hear it because I have a pretty strong lisp now. <laughs> Um, these aligners definitely take some getting used to, so I'm probably going to over-articulate quite a bit in the next couple of videos. Um, I'll have those aligners for about six months, if I'm lucky, I'll get them 
off a little bit sooner than that but the plan is to have them until May and then I'll have a nice straight smile for you um, and for myself, maybe for myself for you. Anyways, uh, the jacket. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is turning out to be a bit of a love-hate relationship. Um, it's a jacket. I'm not feeling super passionate about it. Um, and I guess that happens sometimes with sewing. You know, you have this idea, and, and, and particularly for this one, I feel like I've had this idea months ago, um, so my passion for it kind of waned over the passing of time, and I'm just trying to get it over with and get it done. Not an ideal scenario. So I realized that um, in the future, if I plan like my upcoming projects, I shouldn't plan too far ahead because I don't know if I'm gonna feel as passionate about it um, when, at the, when the time comes where I actually make it. However, I wanna finish this jacket for sure because it's almost done. Um, the collar's in, the lining's in. Now what's left to do is I'm going to shorten the sleeves because they're super long. I tried the jacket on and I placed a pin about where I think I want the jacket to end. Now I'm gonna cut it back and I also will then, because I have a lot of uh, fabric left, I'm gonna cut um, some insert word here. I need to look up what it's called. Cuffs. I'll basically end the sleeves with an overturned part. So when I wear it and I want to turn my sleeves up, I still have the red showing on the outside rather than the leopard lining. And I'll do the same thing for the length of the jacket. So that's my goal for today. And when I have that done, I can add the buttons and then we're finished with this jacket. And then I can start a new project, which I'm super excited about because this is the last piece of my fall capsule series and I'm gonna start my winter capsule series after this. So um, yeah, stoked about this. So to create the cuff for the sleeve, I'm taking the piece that I just cut out, placing it so the right sides are touching, and then I'm gonna sew a straight line down here. I'm now gonna press this seam allowance open, like so, and then I'm going to fold the piece in half, like this, so I have a cuff. Cuffs uh, sewn and pressed and now we're gonna do something similar with the end piece for the jacket so i have this longish piece that i'm going to overturn so i'm removing the pins and then i'm going to open one piece and i'm going to do the same thing with the other piece and then i'm going to place it right sides touching for this piece i will for now only close the length of it so the lower part i'm going to place a few pins just to make sure it's not moving around too much now i'm going to sew a u-shape down here over here all through the length of this piece and then up here again and i'm going to make sure that i'm not sewing this like tip here because that's not actually what i wanted um, i want a straight line so i'm gonna keep that in mind when i sew this now and now i'm going to press this by opening it up like that and pressing the seam allowance apart, so then I can overturn it nicely. Okay, so now that we have the cuffs and the overturned end of the jacket done, we can attach them. So I'll grab my jacket and start with one of the cuffs. I'm going to place a few pins to keep the lining and the shell aligned. Now, I'm going to take the cuff and place the seam, right sides touching onto the side seam of the sleeve and pin that in place. And then I'm going to start to just one layer of the cuff, pin it around the sleeve. Now that I have attached the cuff, I'm gonna pull it out like this and I'm going to press this down flat. After that, I'm going to fold the cuff again into its original shape and then I'm going to, on the inside, fold it over once and pin it down like this and then we can top stitch it closed from the outside. Okay, so I've pressed the cuff and pinned it in place and now when I turn it the right way, I'm going to top stitch this line around here.
All right, so I attached this overturned piece at the end of my jacket. I pinned it all closed and I'm going to hand sew this closed now because I think it's gonna look nicer in the end. It's gonna be a nicer finish. I will also add a few stitches to the button tape top here to close it because I didn't actually do that correctly. Um, I wanna make sure it looks nice so I need to close it by hand. Guys, the jacket is finished, so to speak. Cuffs are on, everything's sewn in nicely. And now we're gonna attach the buttons. This video I salute you I think the message that I wanted to send out generally is just that you know sewing and designing and making clothes is a process and not every time you end up with something that you really like but this is the work that you have to do in order to actually create stuff that you do like I am happy with the jacket I think it's fine I think it could look cute maybe not so much in fall because when I wore this out <laughs> as you can see here maybe it was quite cold very sunny but very cold so I think the jacket might be a better fit for spring with a white tee and jeans or something like this I think the red could look really cute there a red lip or something it's not one of my most favorite pieces but it's okay you know I learned something while making it and I hope maybe you did too and also you know don't be too hard on yourself if you make something that you don't really end up liking so much because that's just uh, the progress and that's the process. Right, I think that's it for me. See you next time. I promise it's gonna be something good. It's already finished. I love it. You're gonna love it. See you next week. <laughs>